Hi, art teachers. I'm Michelle Parvin. I'm an elementary art teacher uh, in a suburb outside of Boston, Massachusetts. And I'm so excited to have you join me today for the Art of Ed's Day in the Life series. In today's Day in the Life, I'm going to show you around my classroom, kind of take you through a typical day, share some art teacher hacks, tips, and tricks that I found have worked really, really well for me. And we're going to be doing some landscape projects with some of my students. So I can't wait to show you. Make sure you like this video and are subscribed to The Art of Ed for more amazing videos like this one. Okay, so it's about quarter to six. It's still dark outside here in Massachusetts. Um, I'm not an early riser, but I'm married to one. So it forces me to get up and do a little self-care in the morning. So I start every day with about 10 to 15 minutes of yoga and stretching. The lighting is intentionally bad right now because I don't need you to see all this. So I just finished um, my mindfulness um, moment. I'm just making my breakfast. I kind of eat the same thing every day, um, tea and toast. I don't drink coffee. And I also take like my vitamin C and my zinc and all of my supplements. Cause if you're a teacher, you know, and I like to just sit down every morning, eat my breakfast, read the paper and take a few minutes to myself before I'm starting my day. So I'm all buff polished and buckled and I'm going to commute to work now to school and I'm very lucky because I work in the same town that I live so my school is only about four or five miles from my house it takes me about 10 minutes let's go okay so I just got in uh, my lunch is away I've hung up my coat and the first thing I do right when I get here is I prep the space and then I'll start prepping my materials so got to take down all these chairs uh, get all the bins out so I'm going to do that now Okay, so here's an overview of my classroom. So you come in, I have two sinks, all the storage. I know that I'm ridiculously blessed with a really big space. So um, this is kind of just a very basic setup in the morning with the bins. All my tables um, are color coded. And then over here, um, I have whatever day it is with the class codes. Uh, and then I have handy helpers every week. So we alternate which table is the handy helper. I don't do jobs in my classroom. It's too much for me to handle. So I just have this um, hanging on the board and there's a sheet for every color table and I just swap it out every week. So after the physical space is set up, I start working on getting my supplies ready for the day. One thing that I do with my teaching is I scaffold my projects, either connecting them by genre, material and so on. So you'll notice the masterpiece wall right behind me is covered in landscapes, which means all of my kiddos K through four are going to be working on some sort of landscape. I find that it really helps me kind of embrace um, what I'm working on with the kids. And then it allows me to see year over year developing those skills in a vertical fashion. The scaffolding teaching doesn't always pertain to genre. Sometimes all my kids will be working on printing projects or collage projects. So in terms of um, materials and being efficient with my time, I find that that works really well, especially because I have no transition time from class to class. To help me stay organized, I have these bins for each grade level. And inside each teaching bin are the materials that I'm working on uh, with that grade. If we're using any coloring type of materials, you'll notice everything is lined up here like soldiers right on the shelves. And again, these bins are color coded by table group. That way the students are always selecting from the same containers. I find that that works really, really well. Um, it's not like, wait, I can't find the pink marker that I was using last time. So everything is stored right here. So all of my work in progress is kept in these cabinets. Um, the first one has the work that we're currently working on. And you can see it's organized by day of the week. So um, I can just pull out all of my folders for my classes that day. And the folders are color coded by grade level. This cabinet has all of our finished work. 
So I hang on to work for the whole year. Um, I find that with art shows and displays, it's really good to have them. And then we make a huge deal of it at the end of the year. Kids make portfolios and whatnot. So this is also all divided up by grade level and specific teacher class. Okay, so this here behind me is my early finisher station and I kind of have all different activities for the kids to engage in if they finish a project early. Let me just show you. So here I have some free draw fortunes for the kids, which are kind of like story starters. These are some masterpiece postcards for inspiration. They can copy, there's information. I've been saving these from School Arts Magazine for a very long time, all the gallery cards. I have some coloring sheets, particularly for my younger kids. These are probably the most popular. You can see it's kind of a mess. Um, these are the how to draw books. Um, and I have them categorized, people, vehicles, cartoons, exact, et cetera. And then the color code on the, on the side matches the code on the book so that the kids know where to put them. And then on the bottom are art history books um, and some games and puzzles. So this is my very meager, but effective early finisher station. So in here is my storage closet. Um, it's only neat right now because I just got a shipment, usually kind of a hot mess express in here, but I needed uh, to conduct sort of Jenga-like efficiency to fit everything in. So after the room is set up, I just plant myself here at my desk for all of maybe seven minutes. Um, I rarely sit down at my desk, but my laptop here, I check my emails, I go through my planning book, um, just to see what's going on for the day. Um, I use Elon Paper Planner. I've used Paper Planner for a really long time. I just don't have the bandwidth to have to like, open up an online calendar. I just like to jot quickly down, erase things um, as I see fit, and it works really well for me. So I'm just gonna do a little business here at my desk and get ready for the kids to come in. Okay, water break. I don't know about you friends, but I do not drink enough water during the day. I'm always dehydrated. Cause I think part of it is that I don't really have time to go use the restroom, but like your mama told you, always drink water. So you can have a little water break now. You don't need to watch me do this. Okay, so it's around 9.15 right now. And my first class is coming in in about 15 minutes. I see every class once a week for 40 minutes and I don't have any transition time in between. Um, so they kind of go boom, boom, boom. Each day I tend to have at least one prep and one planning period. A couple days a week I have a second planning period. So that's really nice. Um, but right now I'm gonna go straight through until lunchtime. So can't wait to show you what we're working on. Good morning, amazing artists. Good morning, Your Highness. How's everyone today? Good, Good. Good. great. You may have noticed that the masterpiece wall has changed. Everyone say, ooh. Ah. First things first, we need to do our mantra. I am amazing. I am amazing. I am mindful. I am mindful. I am creative. I am creative. I am strong. I am strong. Can hear you. I am confident. I am an artist. Breathe in and out. Okay, so we are tearing our paper strips to turn into our mountains. Yep, so just keep, yep, keep maneuvering that that way. That's great. Yeah, that looks great. Let's tear those. Okay, so after we tear our mountains, we trace our mountains. So here's the setup for the tonal landscapes. These are just like chip and dip containers. Um, and the kids are gonna be learning tints and shades. Um, so you'll see that, you know, there is a color in the center. We've got black, we've got white. Um, and then they'll learn all about tints and shades for the tonal landscape. And then depending on which color table you're sitting at, that's gonna be the color of your landscape. It's just much easier to organize that way. So there's the setup. There's the messy mats, and stay tuned. Yep, so you're making your tints by adding white. Nice, that's a good one. Very nice. Nice, careful painting. 
Okay, so it's now 11.30. I just finished my last class of the morning and I get a half hour for lunch, 11.30 to 12. And y'all know how lonely it could be being the only art teacher in your building. So this other specialist and I, music teacher, PE teacher, and library sciences teacher, we eat lunch together almost every day. It's a great way for us to kind of connect. Um, and we have our own little specialist cohort. Um, so I'm gonna go do that now, eat my lunch, and I'll be back in a little bit. Okay, so it's about 12.45 right now. My second graders just left. Um, and I, this is my second planning period of the day before I have kindergarten and first grade coming in. So I thought I'd just take a few minutes and show you samples of how that scaffolded curriculum works with landscapes. Um, so these are upcoming, these are all my teacher samples. Um, kindergarten, we do, um, we learn about Claude Monet and we do a lot of um, sort of dot painting like this, really working on brush control and then they'll go in and add the Japanese bridge. Um, this is sort of a fun abstract kind of project I do with the kids. Um, and it's really working on those early painting skills. Okay, so for my first graders, I really like to work with them on how we can use lines and shapes to tell a story. So we read Harold in the purple crayon. We count how many different places Harold has been. And then we design a cityscape kind of inspired by Harold's um, city that he makes. And we talk about how we can use different shapes in our composition. So they can really draw it any way they want. And then they'll go in and outline it with Sharpie. Um, we will do a watercolor painted background. Um, and then this is also about craftsmanship, about uh, using Mr. Sketch markers and really coloring um, to our very best ability. So this is my first grade landscape project. My second graders, I've done this project for like an eternity. It's a salt painted seascape. Um, and it's really about learning about warm and uh, neutral colors and then doing the salt painted effect where you get that nice glow. But I didn't do it this year. Um, in honor of Disney's 50th anniversary, I decided I wanted to do Mary Blair Castles. Um, I'm kind of bummed now I'm not doing these. Oh well, sometimes we regret our decisions, but it's all good. Um, so they're gonna design a Mary Blair style castle. They'll color it in. Um, it's really about, I'm calling them patterned palaces using patterns in our designs. And then I just kind of mocked this up with like a collage landscape around the castle. Not sure if I'm gonna do it this way or not, but this is what second grade is gonna be working on. So for third grade, you got a little sneak peek of this this morning. We're gonna be doing this tonal landscape. Um, and this is really a lesson about foreground, middle ground, background, and horizon line. Um, this is really about mixing tints and shades. Um, and creating this cool tonal landscape. Um, and this is a great project and the kids really enjoy it. And then fourth grade, I was also just kind of playing around with this. Um, we're gonna do a Kirchner oil pastel kind of abstracted landscape. Um, my fourth graders, I kind of like to push the envelope a little bit and do things that aren't necessarily, um, what's the word? like that's a little funkier because it kind of plays into their personalities a little bit. So one of the things I wanna be sure I do is that I have um, a sample of all of my projects. So I am working on just a quick sketch up or a sample of a project for fourth grade. Um, this project comes from Laura Lohman and her amazing book, Painted Paper Art. Uh, I think it's called uh, Mini Masterpieces. And um, it's a Kirchner landscape project. So this is what I'm gonna be doing with my fourth grade. So I'm just gonna kind of map out roughly uh, the design before I do a demo with the kids. Just generally is a good idea to kind of have an idea of where I'm going with this project. Um, so this is gonna be an oil pastel resist. It's a Kirchner um, landscape. And I'm just trying to create a lot of texture in my um, application here. So I'm gonna try and layer the pastels a little bit, just really rough coloring. And then I'm gonna also go in and just test and see how the temper cakes work on this type of paper. Ooh, it actually works kind of nice. You don't get as much of a resist, but I kind of wanted the idea of 
the natural paper to show up from behind. So here are my first graders working on their cityscapes, really focusing on good craftsmanship with their coloring. Bum, ba -da -dum, bum. All right, friends, it is time to clean up. Listen carefully with my markers. All those caps need to be going in the same direction. And then all the sticks have to go back in the sleeve that I gave you. And then put the lid on that, stack your papers and make a pile on your table of the Sharpies. Handy helpers, you ready to do your job? Yeah, yeah. All right. Okay, so it's currently 2.45. My last class just left, my first graders and it's time for me to break down the room and clean everything up. All right, everything's put away, sponge down. Um, I'm gonna head out, I have to stop at the grocery store on the way home, and then I'm gonna finish up my day. Um, but that's the school portion of my day in the life. Thanks so much for joining me for a day in the life. I hope you've enjoyed this brief glimpse into my classroom and found some hacks and tips and tricks that are useful and also enjoyed some of my landscape project ideas. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to The Art of Ed for more great content like this. Bye.